Okay, so we are back here, gentlemen. We are now at the arrival of Creon, okay? So that exchange that we just read was Antigone and the Chorus. Um, and we saw that while the Chorus pitied her, they also thought that she was going to this death of her own choosing and um, because of her own daring and excess, right? So that's the picture we have of the Chorus's opinion, okay? And one thing about the chorus in Greek tragedy is the chorus often really shapes the way we, the audience, understand the action, okay? Um, so Creon comes in and, oh man, what a jerk. He just comes on in right away and says, if moaning put, would postpone death, no one would ever stop crying. So he's basically saying, yeah, fine, Antigone. All you're doing is moaning and crying over there. Take her away, block up the entrance, leave her there. It's her choice right? Whether she lives or dies. We're leaving her in a grave with food and water. Um, we're, uh, so he basically says, look, I've already compromised. I'm not executing her right away. I'm just going to make her live in a tomb and I've given her food and water. Um, not much of a compromise, right? Um, Antigone responds here, my t oh, tomb, my bridal chamber, home beneath the earth where I go to join my own. All right. Again, we have the bridal chamber image where her tomb and her bridal cham chamber are equated. Um, she's joining the rest of her family, right? Um, and she's also joining those who die unjustly before her time, right? She, or uh, Sorry, she's saying that my death is worst of all because I'm dying unjustly, right? She says, this is not fair that I'm being killed like this, okay? Um, all right, and she says, look at what I'm dying for. I'm dying for tending your body, my dearest brother Polynices, okay? Um, and then she goes on to justify this, and this is, some people look back at this and think this is kind of a weird justification, right? Because she says, look, here's why I had to do it. Um, if my... Uh, she says, I would not have acted this way in defiance of the state if I had been the mother of children or if my husband had died. And she says, look, if, I, if my husband had died, I could have remarried. Or if I'd lost a child, I could have born another. But she says, look, since my father and mother are dead, I can't have any more brothers. So this was the last of my brothers. And this is why I had to honor him. Um... That's a really, it's an interesting justification. I'm not sure, she's, this is the first time she's brought that up. Um, so I don't know how uh, seriously we need to take it right here, but you know, that's what she says, right? Um, and now she says again with the, she says, I know not the bar marriage bed. I know not the bridal hymn. I will never have my own child. Um, I am alone and a wretched creature. This close here, guys, is one of the most famous parts of this whole play. She asks a series of questions. Um, the first two questions, what laws of God did I violate? What am I being punished for? What did I do wrong? And then she says, why am I wasting time praying to the gods? Whom can I call to stand by my side? So there's a couple things then. She keeps saying that, you know, she's suffering unjustly and she's suffering alone right? Those are the two big things that come out of An Antigone's speech here, is that she's suffering unjustly and she's alone going through all this, right? That's what makes her so wretched. It's unjust um, and it is, uh, it is forcing me into isolation, okay? And look at what she says here. She lays out a curse. She says, if the gods think that my punishment is deserved, then I forgive my executioner. But if my executioner is guilty, meaning if the gods don't think I should have died, I curse my executioner and demand that the gods make him suffer the same pain he unjustly inflicts upon me. Wow. Well, the executioner is Creon, right? I mean, he may not be the one holding a sword, but he's the one ordering her death, right? So that's heavy duty, right? I mean, she's basically sending a curse down on Creon. She's asking the gods to curse, uh, to send suffering down to Creon. All right. Okay. So now the chorus after all, after that exchange says, um, that she still has this same passionate wind. She has not softened at all. Um, 
Creon says, get her out of here. This is bringing her closer to death. And now there is no escape. Okay. And this is Antigone's exit. We will not see for her again. Uh, she is being led to her tomb. Okay. All right. So she says, I am the last of the royal line. See what I suffer and who causes it. Because I honored what should be honored. Right. She's making it very clear. I did what was right. And I am being unjustly punished for it. Okay. All right. So that's the exchange between Creon and Antigone. All right. 